Welcome back to Good Morning Britain. We are finding out how men can make women great again because uh, in Orlando, Florida, is a man charging almost a thousand dollars. Anthony Dream Johnson, who says he wants to abolish feminism and make women great again. Yeah, Orlando, Florida, that's going to be the scene of the crime. 21 studios, okay? They are pretty much the Avengers of the manosphere. So this convention is put on by a company called 21 Studios, and they have this whole convention every year called the 21 Convention, where it's just teaching men how to be better. Women are queuing up to pay nearly a thousand dollars to have a man like Anthony tell them how to be women. It's mansplaining palooza. Anthony Dream Johnson, that's really his name. And he's the founder of the convention. Like yourself and like Anthony Johnson, the president. The first president of the manosphere. You're protecting the sphere in a way that not enough people give you credit for. Thanks, man. And I really mean that, because if you didn't protect the sphere at all, it would just be a complete shit show. That's why you're the president, right? <laughs> you gotta be presidential. You gotta be presidential. Oh, yes. And that guy's name was Anthony the Dream Johnson, the president of the f***ing Manosphere. There's only one guy in the Manosphere. Yeah, you're a peach, uh, Mr. President. You're f***ing done, dude. That's all there is to it. Uh, all in favor, say aye. Excuse me, I'm mansplaining here. Welcome back to the 15-year anniversary event. Uh, the next speaker is going to be delivering an address, not even a presentation. It's going to be literally the state of the manosphere. Uh, I've come to absolutely enjoy these events, and even though this is the second one that we're doing, I, I want to recall the, the notion that this is being done and accomplished in a pandemic. This man has done more to unite the manosphere to clean up its filth and to move it forward and move the Overton window of acceptability of communications and conversations between men and women and navigating our natural environment uh, together more than any other man within this space. I am absolutely happy to announce our following speaker is the president of the manosphere, Anthony Dream Johnson. Please give him a hand. Welcome, boys. It's been a couple of days since you've seen me speak. I've been in and out, running all three events, introducing a couple of speakers, doing all kinds of fun stuff. I appreciate you being here, being a man, showing the fuck up, getting through airports, all this kufid bullshit, and uh, being a man and being here, man, it means a lot to me, like I told you. It's you guys here behind tickets, sitting in seats, getting your ass in that seat across the country, in most cases, that makes this event possible. Without you, there would be no convention. So we talk on no wall. So I appreciate it big time, man. With that said, this is going to be the State of the Manosphere 2021. I'm very excited to give it. It's going to be a hell of a roast, hell of a fire roast, big fire we're going to get going here. Get your marshmallows out, get ready, get some popcorn. It's going to be a lot of fun. I might take questions at the end, but I'm not sure off time. If I do, you know, great. If I don't, I'll take them, of course, off stage, hallway, you know, dinner, drink, stuff like that. So I'll talk to you. Don't worry. First things first, uh, I gave a keynote speech to the ladies at the 22 convention across the hall back on Friday. Make sure you check out the video when it hits 21 University, included with your ticket, or later on YouTube, of course, for free, free to the world, that, and stuff like that. The title of that keynote, about an hour long, called Make Women Virgins Again. It is not about born again virgins, none of that, none of that garbage. Uh, it's about valuing female virginity, and uh, women you know, not being a bunch of skanks. I call them skankaroos now these days, like a kangaroo, but instead of hopping around on their feet, they hop around from like dick to dick. Tender thoughts, things like that, a skankaroo. You know? So last year in the State of the Manosphere, I provided, I mean, it's a whole speech, you can go watch it, 21 University YouTube, but I outlined a common mission, a common theme, a fundamental theme for the Manosphere. It's one I've been promoting since 2019 at our Poland convention in Warsaw, back before the world went to shit. You could actually get on a plane and travel with relative ease. And the Manosphere, in my view, is a positive, what it should be for, its purpose, its mission. It should be a positive future for men, boys, and fathers. Not just men's rights, not just men's issues, not just picking up chicks, not just marriage and relationships, not just masculinity. It should be a positive future in totality and fundamentally for men, boys, and fathers. The entire spectrum of human life is a man, as a male, essentially. A non-birthing person, as we call it these days. <laughs> I've never seen anyone else uh, attempt to do this, so that's one of the reasons I started doing it. I wanted to help unite this community keep pushing it forward and making it uh, advance into the ages. 
The manosphere is in some ways old and in some ways young. Feminism, by comparison, is well over 100 years old at this point, at least since 1848 in the United States, and even older than that in places like Britain. The manosphere is about 25 to 30 years old, a little bit older if you talk to Will Spencer, what we call the proto-manosphere. This is the men's movement he talked about in his speech in the 70s and 80s. Uh, Dr. Warren Farrell, for example, good friend, has been on our podcast, uh, the Red Man Group a couple times, Will's interviewed him, great dude. But the manosphere in its modern form is at least 25 years old, which quarter of a century is pretty old, but compared to feminism, which is over 150, it's a big difference. So it depends what you're looking at here, but anyway, this is a common mission and purpose for it, and I think it's one we should all get behind 100%. I've said it for a couple years now, I'm gonna keep saying it every fucking year, to drive it into people's skulls. This is the speech from Poland, you should go watch it. It's literally called The Manosphere, A Positive Future for Men, Boys, and Fathers. It outlines and dives deeper uh, into that common purpose and mission itself. And again, it's at 21U and free to the world on 21 Studios at YouTube. In that speech in 2019 in Poland, my first time outlining the Manosphere itself, its mission, its purpose, a lot of its history, this is my model of the Manosphere. Uh, I don't think it's perfect, but it's my take at it. I think it's really good. The only thing we should probably keep adding to it uh, and do its own formal community is like a fatherhood element to the Manosphere. So basically this big circle is the Manosphere itself. And within it you have little sub-tribes. You have the old uh, pickup artist community, the seduction community. Guys like John Anthony uh, that you saw speak here. Other speakers we've had, Zan Perrion, Ross Jeffries, Al uh, dating coach, or seduction coach, I think he would call himself, Alan Roger Curry. You know, it's a huge community that started in the late 90s with Mystery and Neil Strauss, Ross Jeffries, all those guys. You have the MGTOW, you guys are all pretty familiar with that, MGTOW, men going their own way. You have men's rights activists, they've been going for a long time on their own. I do think they're a distinct part of this community. And the Red Pill space that was mostly focused in on Reddit at the Red Pill, they had about 300,000 uh, members until they got quarantined, basically censored by Reddit. What else is fucking new in this country, right? So these are the four sub-tribes, and then outside of those you have what I call kind of the outer manosphere. Will Spencer, a good friend of mine, calls it, the speaker here, the suburbs of the manosphere. And that would be guys like maybe Sargon of Akkad, big YouTuber, talks about you know, how stupid feminism is, talks about men's issues a little bit. He even spoke at the ICMI, the International Conference on Men's Issues. That's like the men's rights version of 21 Convention, so it's much more specific to legal issues, politics, policy, stuff like that. We talk about that a little bit at 21 Convention, as you've noticed, but much more so it's like masculinity focused, self-improvement focused, it's you focused. We want you to be the best man you can be. Those issues are important, but they focus on them much more exclusively and explicitly. But again, in that wider circle, you have guys like Sargon of Akkad, I would say Jordan P. Peter B. Peterson, Stefan Molyneux, uh, another good example, former speaker of 21 Convention. So this is kind of my model of it. I think it's a really good model. It's one that's easy to understand, easy to look at, screenshot it, take a picture, all that stuff, and share it with friends. Or anybody, for example, bitching about the manosphere. It's evil, blah, 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 male supremacism, male supremacist Nazi, all this fucking garbage that they say today. This is another model from one of our, uh, an old attendee at 21 convention, German guy, pretty cool. I don't agree with this completely, but it's his attempt as an attendee to kind of outline the history of the past 25, 30 years of the Manosphere on a timeline. So again, this is not mine, credit top left, where you can go look at it, medium.com slash deep thoughts. He has some other cool models too he's trying to put together to understand and map out the Manosphere, which is really big. A lot of men and a lot of people that want to criticize, or even men who are, you know, partake in it, maybe you follow 21 Convention, obviously, you might follow some speakers. It's much bigger than you realize. It's something Will Spencer and I talked a lot about uh, this year when we had a podcast. Uh, not even too long ago, it's huge. And when you really dig into it, like Will and I have, you know, from different angles, you see how massive it is and how expansive it is. And guys, they find it, you know, they find it, you know, I always see guys on the YouTube channel, they find the Manosphere like six months ago or two years, and like, they kind of have this like uh, very new view of it, right, almost like a childlike view. Because they've had like an 18 month experience of it, and they think that's the whole fucking thing, and really it's like this 30 year window in the time, right? It's millions of people, millions of men that are involved with it in different ways. Different communities, different conferences, different speakers, different books. You know, you have hundreds and hundreds, maybe even thousands of creators at this point. Authors, YouTubers, stuff like that. Guys with PhDs, dating coaches, you know, the whole fucking spectrum of stuff. So it's another cool model. And again, it's like a timeline, you know, from way back in the day to pickup artistry, 
the Red Pill community, and now kind of this wider manosphere that it's all kind of coalescing to over time. And I think it's been getting more positive and more mature over time too, in spite of some of the antics that I do for fun, shits and giggles, and other purposes too that we'll get into. So last year, Michael Foster was speaking, of course, at the Patriarch Edition. He spoke here too uh, this year, but he's right there giving a speech right now, I believe, actually, closing out the Patriarch uh, Fatherhood event we do for fathers. This is the first time I met him. You know, he was not in any way biased. I had barely talked to him before the event. He was a fresh speaker, and he had no, uh, very few preconceived notions of the event. He had heard about it. Obviously, he agreed to speak at it. He came in, and this is one of the things he said about it after the fact. One of the best things about the attendees and speakers at the 21 convention was their absolute contempt for frauds and fakes. Absolute contempt. Not, I don't like them, not, well, whatever. Fucking hate them. Frauds, hypocrites, liars, and bullshitters. Because it's unmanly and it's unmasculine to be a liar and a bullshitter, to be dishonorable, in the way Jack Donovan would talk about. Strength, courage, mastery, and honor. To be a dishonorable piece of shit is unmanly, Zero, uh, zero fucks given about that. That's what I believe. And most men here believe that by far. Much more so than the rest of the culture, which has become this beta male, pussified soup of losers. These guys that get, I mean, it's sometimes, on one hand, you know, we're fed propaganda, and that's, you're not responsible for that. I'm a millennial. I was born into this feminist shitstorm, right? But also, we're responsible for accepting those lies, like food, right? If someone feeds you poison, you're not responsible for making that food, but you're responsible for eating it. You need to spit that shit out, vomit it out, whatever. That's kind of what you guys do here, right? You learn about the bullshit you were fed, and you're like, get the fuck out of here. And these speakers help you understand that in different ways, specific to what their uh, experience is, their focus, and their history, and uh, area of expertise. <clears throat> I love this, though, and one of the reasons I wanted to put this out is that this is my attempt to unite the manosphere, and this is my thrust to do it, is to be overt and talk about this, these issues, right? Frauds are bad. They're bad for any organization, any country, like traitors. There's an, old, uh, there's an old quote by Cicero, I think, about how nations, they can survive fools, but not like traitors from within. Traitors are worse than enemies. Enemies, at least, you can see, right? They're open, they're out there. Traitors from within are around you, and it's bad, really bad. They can take down an organization, a nation, a community. They're toxic, they're unhealthy. They need to be... You should not obsess about them, but it's healthy to have conflict with them and get them out, like a parasite or a leech or a cockroach or something like that. Get the fuck out of here. So you probably know that the manosphere has been rocked in 2021 by a series of scandals and frauds and different issues. Uh, these three are some of the three culprits just of this year, right? Not even, just, uh, never mind previously, just 2021. I call them the Three Stooges, Shardy, Fakey, and Fraudy. You might know him as Donovan Sharp, Walter Weeks, and uh, Amru Fraudel on the right there. So Shardy, Fakey, and Fraudy. Donovan Sharp, first up, <laughs> right here. Uh, real piece of shit. And we're going to get into why. Actually, we'll get into a little bit of that, but there's a whole documentary on it that's much more serious. It's three hours. It's super in-depth, like literally th two hours and 55 minutes or some shit. And it's called The Truth About Donovan Sharp, or Sharp. You can find it on our YouTube channel. It's got over 100,000 views. It's very in-depth and it's very serious. As funny as this shit is, I love making this shit, uh, it's a much more serious issue you should look into. Don't let the book, uh, the cover, fool you. It's much more serious. He's also known as Shart Dusa and the Shart Mama, we like to call him. Uh, the one on the left is actually the thumbnail we use for the documentary itself. Well, these assholes, I wasn't actually involved with these guys. They kind of blew themselves up. And I just kind of got to eat popcorn and watch this shit go down back in August. I was like, what pieces of shit? These guys are based out of Miami. I call them Fake and Faker with the Fraud Boys. Uh, again, that's Walter Weeks. They're only like a podcast down there. Uh, they did a lot of screwy shit. And John Anthony, for example, a speaker here, he's done a lot of videos exposing these guys, roasting them for what losers they are and frauds. Liars. Scammers who want to hurt wounded men, push pain buttons for money, and take money out and just steal money from them, basically. The Fraud Father's a famous one, uh, Frollo Tomasi back from 2019. That was a big shit show. This guy basically docks the location at 21 convention of over 50 attendees on our final night, like Sunday night, like tonight, to a feminist reporter at the New York Times, completely against my wishes, the wishes of the other speakers, everything like that. He threw these guys under the bus. Piece of shit. 
They're actually, these three are the MBI's uh, top most wanted losers. The Fraud Father, Don the Sharp Mama, and uh, Pigwood. This dude on the right is a child stalker. You guys probably know him as like modern loser dating. Uh, three total scumbags, 100%. Big frauds. We have a lot of fun making these memes. This from Big Mama, like Big Mama 3 or something like that. But I show this because these two are related. This guy on the left, the Sharp Mama, is Donovan Sharp, is older than uh, Amru. So these two, these kind of guys get hooked up with each other. They create kind of this like fraudulent syndicate to scam guys out of money. They scratch, you know, scratch this guy's back, scratch that guy's back. They help each other out in this network of idiots. Now recently, I call this the Shark Apocalypse with Donovan Sharp. So this guy, it's a long story, but basically, he tried doing his own conference this exact weekend. He promised, and I quote, vengeance on me, 21 convention, all this shit. I had a conference scheduled for this exact weekend. A couple weeks ago, he canceled it. And as far as I know, based on his public statements, he kept all the money. He used these guys, these speakers, to promote a conference and sell tickets for like a thousand bucks, canceled the conference for made up bullshit, kept the money. And that's not only did he say that, as far as I can tell, that's explicit to his terms of service. Not only all sales final, which is not uncommon for a conference, all sales final, which is what we do, except we give you money back if we cancel the event. If we don't do the event, we're not keeping your money. That's insane. Any company that do that is absolute fra absolutely fraudulent. They sold tickets to the event, not that many, like five or some shit. Who knows? That's why, probably why they canceled it. And he kept the fucking money. Instead of getting their money back, they get ebooks. Imagine if I canceled your ticket, canceled this whole fucking event, kept all of your guys' money, and I gave you 10 years of 21 University, a full decade, you'd be fucking pissed. You'd be trying to sue me, you'd call your credit card company, this guy fucked us out of money. That's what this piece of shit did, and he used these guys to do it, and not one of them has, sat, has stood up and said anything about it. That's shitty, that's shitty fuck, that's beyond shitty behavior. That's bordering up from fraud to theft, stealing money from people. That shit needs to be called out. That's fucking sick. This community cannot stand this kind of fraud. So actually what I did is I, I put a post out, very polite, as much as I like to curse, make fun of people, post memes and shit. This is pretty serious. So I put out a post on YouTube, for example, on our community tab, and I asked, have any of these speakers had to cancel a flight? Did you cancel hotels? Did you cancel, you know, where's the venue at? Nobody said shit, not a peep. The only guy who responded was Aaron Clary. Instantly blocked me. Boom. I'm asking, hey man, you got a flight? Where's your flight at, bro? Event's in two weeks, where's your flight? No flight to cancel? Where's the hotel, where's the venue? They didn't even have a fucking venue. Selling tickets, keeping ticket money, canceling the event, no flights, no hotel, no fucking venue. Scam. And then he just blocked me, pussy. And then he went and started bitching about me on YouTube. Anyway, I'm leading the charge as best I can, along with guys like John Anthony. Put my head on Napoleon, right? Just being a total arrogant dick. I really believe in this. Like, it's not something to obsess about on an end endless basis, but it's something that needs to be addressed. When men get money stolen from them in fucking broad daylight and no one says shit, no. I'm not okay with that. No one should be okay with that. That's sick. That's like an unhealthy community that has just these fraudulent losers sucking money out of people with no one pushing back and no one speaking up. This community has gone on for too long like that. I've been sick of it for years now, fighting back. I'm one of the few that stood up and said, no, no more. I'm going to put my balls on the line, my money on the line, file lawsuits, whatever the fuck I got to do to stand up for what's right in this community, just like Ian Smith does with his gym. My view is I found this meme. I loved it. This little Charlie Brown meme. If it can be destroyed by the truth, it deserves to be destroyed by the truth, 100%. If you notice, after all these years, I fight with some of these guys. I make expose them with evidence and receipts and mile-long train of evidence, right? Not one of them has come at me with fucking evidence of anything. I might be the biggest asshole in the fucking universe, but I am not a fraud. People don't accuse me of that shit because I am not and I fucking hate it. So you can call me whatever you want, any name you want, insult, I don't give a fuck. I care about what's true and I care about reality, not this fraudulent fake bullshit and fake realities they make to scam money out of men. It's sick. This community should be a positive place for men not a place where men that are hurt and wounded out of relationships and marriages get preyed on. That's fucked up and sick. Men are treated like shit today. They need help and guidance and mentorship, not fraud scam them out of money.
Like I said, John Anthony's doing a great job. He's another huge asshole like me. He's actually the one guy who's probably more aggressive than I am, which is remarkable with this stuff. He makes video after video exposing these guys. Uh, so that's like a little MBI thing. We made a little meme, Man Manosphere uh, Bureau of Investigation. But if you see something, say something. Don't just do, do nothing, right? I see something going on. I see guys getting scammed out of money. I see you know, no event, no refunds. That doesn't make any fucking sense. You gotta be kidding me. No, only you can prevent Manosphere fraud with Truthy the Bear, okay? We're gonna make the bear next outside. We got the bears. Truthy the Bear. This is a real email address. If some shit happens to you, you get defrauded, you can email mbitips at protonmail.com. And that's not a government organization, obviously, it's just like the thing we made, but it's a real thing. And if you guys email us tips that we can verify, we'll make videos on it, you know, exposing it to the manosphere and to the wider community. It's important to air these things out, not hide behind all this shadowy bullshit. No, let's go in public. You know, one of the things they say is they go like, they go, oh, the drama is feminine, it's feminine. That's bullshit. What they're trying to do is delegitimize all conflict. Some conflict is legitimate. A fight between men. Think about men, you know, the founding fathers used to fucking shoot each other, literally, right? That's not, that's not feminine, that's very fucking masculine. Feminine drama is like girls in high school fighting over Chad Thundercock, the quarterback, right? That doesn't matter. So you have legitimate conflict between men, like men getting scammed out of money and fraud and shit like that, including if it goes to court, and then you have like illegitimate drama. It's important to draw a distinction, not throw all of it out, you know, baby with the bathwater stuff. And anytime these guys say, oh, that's feminine, that's feminine, you know what you've never seen? Anyone ever explain what the fuck that means? They go, it's feminine, zero explanation. What does that mean? Why is it feminine? I don't know, it's just feminine. Scam, bullshit. They're trying to throw the baby out of the bathwater and they don't want to address it, they don't want to deal with it. Now I don't give a fuck. I care about what's true and I care about what's real, of this fake fraudulent bullshit. You know, it's gotten so fucking bad that we interview people like Andrew Tate, a uh, buddy of mine, you know, is one, uh, probably speaker in the future, he's promised to speak here. You know, I went down to Miami and I had to ask him because he's a dating coach. It's gotten so bad, I'm like, do you, it just popped out of my head, just kind of randomly, like, didn't plan this. I asked him to his face. I'm like, do you fuck any old fat women? Because there are so many dating coaches in this community that fuck old fat women and lie about it, that when I interview somebody, this actually comes to my head. I didn't think he did, but I still had to ask. Talk to me about all these dating coaches in the Manosphere. These guys who, uh, you know, they're, they say they're red pill alpha males and then all they do is fuck old fat women. So what do you think about these guys? <laughs> yeah. I, I'm trying to be politically correct. Do you fuck any old fat women? No, I do not, no. <laughs> you're, you're very good at bringing out the worst in me. That's why you're the president, right? <laughs> you gotta be presidential. You gotta be presidential. <laughs> and he answered, no, I don't fuck any old fat women. I was like, I appreciate that. But that's how bad it's gotten. This guy married a fat old piggy and lied about her for years. Took seven years off of her age. For years, nobody knew, right? Married her like 43, claiming she was 36 years old, 37 years old. It's bullshit. Got a picture of the wedding and even the paparazzi got the honeymoon here with the piggy. <laughs> at, at Mount Bacon. It's a big old woman. This is for real, man, it's funny. If you see the real photos of this shit, your head will explode. Calls her a hard nine. She missed Piggy. It's disgusting. <laughs> Lately, I say she looks like a Ninja Turtle. Is my new favorite one. Go look, man. You, it's funny. It is funny. When you watch, it's even worse. We even have them on video calling her fat and stuff. Calls her a dense woman. Yeah, she's big boned. It's disgusting, man. And these people, the, the money, these are the people who steal money from people. They pretend to be these red pill alpha males. They're fucking losers. They fuck literally old fat women and lie about it. If you didn't lie about it, I wouldn't be as mean, right? But they have to lie about it. The minute you lie, like, you, you set the stage, man. You're gonna get fucking roasted. I'm gonna make fun of you. Now, if he was like, I love her and she's fat, whatever, I'd be like, I would leave it alone. But no, you're scamming out of money, you lie about the women you fuck, you lie about their age, you lie about how heavy they are, and you expect me to do nothing about that and just pretend like that's normal? That's sick. If you wanna be an expert and charge men money on being an expert, on picking up women and dating and relationships, you better have something to, something to show for it. And if you, if you fraudulently misrepresent and misadvertise that, false advertising, I'm gonna roast your ass, man. No holds barred, go fuck yourself. So again, it's about uniting the manosphere and healing it. And that means keeping toxic shit out, not just pretending fraud doesn't happen. Like what, we have a thousand content creators and 100% of them are legit? That's fucking delusional. 
There isn't an industry on the planet that has no frauds, right? The fitness industry has frauds, the financial industry has frauds. You know, you got uh, Bernie Madoff back in the day f scamming his own fucking family out of money. You got that crazy uh, Theranos chick, she's going to trial right now, the bug-eyed Steve Jobs wannabe. There's fraud fucking everywhere, and it needs to be addressed, and it's healthy and normal and masculine to address it in particular. These are conflict avoidant beta males, they hate it. They don't want to deal with it, they're scared of it. Conflict is scary to them. That's probably the main reason a lot of guys suck with women. You're conflict avoidant. Women sniff that shit a mile away. If you can't handle conflict with men, she's gonna run your ass over too. She doesn't want that. How's she gonna feel safe if you fucking knock her up? You're a pussy and she knows it. And these conflict avoidant beta males, he's not one obviously, he's all about it. He loves seeing this shit. Well, he laughs at it, you know. Anybody with a sense of humor laughs at this shit. But it's about healing the community and keeping it healthy and moving it forward over time. Not letting it get dragged down into a mano swamp of fraud and losers and that fuck old fat women is sick. So there's another reason too we need to keep the manosphere healthy. It isn't just to keep men, hurt men that are vulnerable and stuff like that from getting, you know, scammed out of money and stuff like that or preyed on. It's bigger than that. This is from the, uh, the postgraduate naval school, I believe is the name. This is a thesis by Kelly C. Fitzgerald. It's a hundred, this is it right here. It's a hundred and nine fucking pages of bullshit. Well done bullshit. I mean, this is like a lot of hard work, right? And who is Kelly C. Fitzgerald? She's a training specialist at the Federal Emergency Management Agency, Department of Homeland Security. This bitch wrote a 109-page hit piece on the Manosphere. It's well done. I can't credit she's, not, at least physically speaking, maybe intellectually she's a lazy ass. At least in terms of like putting in the grunt work, she's not a lazy ass. There's a lot of hard work in this thing. We're gonna get into it more in a second. This, she's basic, she's a federal fucking employee. She works for the Department of Homeland Security. And it's all about mapping the Manosphere, a social network analysis of the Manosphere on Reddit. And it goes beyond that. This woman, as a student here, and this whole school too, by the way, I talked to students who went here. This school, you have to be a military officer active or an active employee for the federal government to go here. If you're not one of those two things, you will not get in. One of the main functions is this school. It's out in California, Montgomery, I believe is the city. They provide basic introductory level intelligence throughout, well, actually beyond America, because foreign uh, governments look at it. The joke of the school apparently is that the Chinese, like Chinese intelligence, because whenever they publish a paper, they have to publish it publicly because it's like federally funded and shit. The Chinese uh, IP addresses hit it immediately. They get free intel basically. But the students at this school are basically used. They're used to create intelligence for other agencies. The professors push it on the students and the students make it for the thesis. Then it gets used by the FBI, the CIA and shit like that. It's how shit gets processed and bumped up the ladder and then they take it even more seriously. It's a process to demonize and vilify people or create legitimate intelligence. It's not always illegitimate bullshit like what's in this thing, right? But it's how it works. So you have a FEMA, literally a FEMA employee, literally a, a fucking agent for Department of Homeland Security writing up hippies. This is free, by the way. You can go check this out. I found this a few weeks ago. I'm on Google looking for one of my own tweets. I couldn't find it. And I see this huge, this huge 109-page document. Like, what the fuck is this thing? And I shared it to the speakers, and we're all like, holy fucking shit. We're getting into what it is. So one of the things this bitch does, Kelly C. Fitzgerald, is she just decides to make up any, drag anything into the manosphere she wants, right? And Sean Smith, you know, God bless him, he pointed out this woman wrote a 109-page document thesis, right, for her master's. Talks all about me, Paul Elam, Warren Farrell, 21 Convention, ICMI, Make Women Great Again, Paul Elam, like all this stuff. Like she really got into the weeds with this stuff. But she didn't think to ask one fucking question. She didn't email me, she didn't email Warren Farrell, who by the way, like I, I curse and I have all this controversy on me, right? She goes after Warren Farrell like crazy in this thing, PhD. Nicest guy you ever meet. Clean as a fucking whistle, squeaky clean, right? No one's safe, whether it's an asshole like me or someone like Warren Farrell or Sean Smith, they don't give a fuck and they won't even ask. They won't ask you one question let us write whatever the fuck they want, all this propaganda bullshit. So she includes with the Manosphere, she goes on Reddit and says this bullshit is part of the Manosphere. She goes up, these, these are communities, they have like 10,000 members, 50,000, 100,000, right? There's little communities on Reddit, it's like a little social network. 
are beating women, like from our, like it'd be our the red pill, our MGTOW, are beating women, beating women to creep shots, brain cells, incels. The list goes fucking on and on. She eventually gets to like red pill, MGTOW, and, uh, men's rights, stuff like that that's more legitimate. She just includes all this bullshit all on her own. And this actually is what's gonna get used by government agencies, FBI, CIA, shit like that. This is sick. There's only one guy I've ever seen in the manosphere promote beating women, and that's Donovan Sharp. That's on video. We have it on our channel. You can go watch it. He talks about beating women for disrespect on video, like 2019, 2020. We found that shit deep in his channel, and we're like, holy shit. No one else has ever done that, and that is not endorsed by anyone in this community. Beating women is not good. It's not part of the manosphere. It's a fucking crime. But this is the crap they do. It's slanderous and defamation. It's bullshit. Propaganda bullshit. And they won't even fucking ask, is this part of the manosphere? No. They just lob it in, because it's all fucking game and it's all fucking scam. It's sick. Now, this is a little diagram she made partway, about midway through the document. You should find this. Google mapping the manosphere. You'll find the PDF for free. Because again, the school has to publish all this for free because it's federally funded. This is a Venn diagram similar to what I made, except it's wrong. She includes incel, so she has MRAs on the top, men's rights movement, or MRM. That's not bad, that's fine. Pickup artists on the bottom, like I do. She's watched my speeches, by the way, so she'll probably watch this. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> She literally cites them with the YouTube links. I'm like, oh God. At least cite 21 University. Give me some traffic, bitch. <laughs> so the top one's not bad. And so this diagram is not completely bad, right? The pickup artist on the bottom, the men's rights on the top, the MGTOW on the left. She basically skips the father stuff and the red pill. Okay, whatever, not the end of the world. But then she includes incels, a voluntary celibate on the right. No. I did an interview. It never got published, but I have the audio. I recorded it and that reporter recorded it. That New York Times reporter that Rolo docks these fucking attendees to, their location, she came back the next year under much tighter supervision and control so she didn't get you guys on the front page of the New York fucking Times. That's why we don't let reporters in here. I don't want some, some feminist reporter walking around, oh, hey, I'm going to watch the event with a fucking body cam on, and then you get slammed on the front page of the New York Times as a male supremacist Nazi. You guys are not public figures. You're just attendees. That's not your job to, to battle with these people. That's my job and maybe the other speakers. That's it. Not the staff, not the volunteers, not you. Not, that's bullshit. Anyway, she came back and I did talk with her. And I recorded it so she wouldn't misquote us and fuck us, right? Some of the other speakers talked to her too. And she asked me, at least she had, the, at least she had the, the decency to ask, are incels part of the manosphere? I said, no, 100% no. Because these people, the, number one, they're not. That's factually true. I don't believe they are. I've never believed that. I don't know any other major speaker here that believes that. They're their own fucking thing. Right? It's not part of what we do. But they want to use that to slander us. Because they say these incels in Canada and America, right? They rent a van, they run people over, and the, you know, the dude, the Isla Vista shooting back in 2014, Elliot Rogers, he, you know, he's part of the manosphere and he shoots up all these women and men too, right? Those dudes hate the manosphere. Elliot Rogers was explicit about that. He was all over a website called PUA Hate, bitching about how much he hates the manosphere. And then they want to include that shit with us? either individually or as a whole movement, retarded. 100% no, and I've been on record with the New York Times mainstream media saying that 100%, and I have the fucking audio of it. So this is fucking bullshit, it's a lie. And she knew that. This Kelly FEMA employee, Kelly Fitzgerald, she fucking knew that when she made this. This is fake and it's stupid. Mine is much more right. Maybe it's not perfect. We need to add probably the fatherhood element, for example. Maybe you could put people in it, like Molyneux and Jordan Peterson, whatever, right? We can, we can argue about little details like that all day long. But this is way more accurate, and this is what I'm saying officially, right? On behalf of the Manosphere, as the one guy who's tried to lead it formally, had the balls, the audacity, the nerve, and the arrogance to do that. And if she doesn't like it, she can go fuck herself. The mainstream media has not only attacked me, they recognize me as the president of the Manosphere. So if you don't like it, go fuck yourself. I don't know what else to tell you. The incels are not part of this community, whether they're peaceful or they shoot up a fucking school or rent a van and run people over. That has nothing to do with us, a thousand percent. Get the fuck out of here. No. N-O, no. Behave yourself, you stupid <laughs> I'm just gonna be an asshole with that, but whatever. Maybe she's a nice lady or a lying piece of shit. You know, I guess we'll find out. 
She also calls us male supremacists, right? So that's, uh, we're going to go through the four here. So if you saw in the middle, there's these four things. And this is how, in her thesis, she tries to define the manosphere, right? Now, this is going to crack you up. Because I looked at this, I'm like, you've got to be fucking kidding me. So in her view of her analysis, and again, she put in at least grunt work. Maybe she's lazy in the brain, like a little bit, but she put in the legwork, right? We'll call it the legwork. Her belief is that being gender binary theory unites the manosphere as the, the chief element. I never thought of this before, because I think like 99% of people, or 98, or whatever, gender binary theory is not a theory, it's just life. Like you just, there's men and there's women, there's male and female, like gorillas have male and female, monkeys have male and female, humans have male, this is not like a controversial issue unless you're fucking stupid or crazy, right? It's just normal. Like, I grew up in the 90s. When you go to the bathroom, there's, like, the male bathroom and the girl bathroom. You know, like, it's this fucking thing. This is, she says this is what unites the manosphere. Gender binary theory. How, about, how sick is our culture that as a men's community, they have to define us by the fact that we believe men are men and women are women? So I, I guess this is right, but I think that's, like, the whole culture. At least anybody who has a half a brain cell left. You've got to be fucking kidding me. The other ones are not too bad, actually, like Will Spencer stuff gets into this. Masculine crisis, so there's a crisis of masculinity. But even that has been talked about in wider culture for a long time. Look at comedians like Bill Burr and George Carlin, the pussification of the American male. This is talked about in comedy and TV and entertainment, like it's pretty obvious. You can deny it, but you can also deny that the sky is blue. Men have changed, and it's not for the better. That's, why the, that's part of why the manosphere exists. It's a positive, healthy pushback to men not acting like men to men being you know, psychologically and culturally neutered and castrated and emasculated. It's stupid. It's bad for you, and women hate it. And kids need, they need masculine fathers. Families need fathers that lead, that lead their family, that are patriarchs. So again, like it's, they're trying to define us, but it's like these are positive things. And some of them are so basic and fundamental, it's skept I'm skeptical you can even associate it with the manosphere. That's just like everybody. She then gets into a red pill moment, which again, I'm not totally against. That's when guys kind of see the manosphere, a part of it, and they wake the fuck up as something's wrong. That could be going through a divorce court and you lose your ass, or for example, paying lifetime alimony or losing custody battles. Men lose 86% of custody battles in this country, and of the 14%, half of them, the men win because the mother didn't even show up to court. Men lose, lose almost universally, right, in our equality-focused country, this hyper-equality bullshit. Is, that, is men losing 86 to 90-something percent of custody battles equal? No. Men are treated like shit in the countries their grandfathers built, legally and systematically by the court system throughout all 50 states. It's, it's, fucking, it's a huge scam. It's sick. It's evil. And then, she, and this is my favorite part, she says the man is united and anti-feminism, which I think is pretty accurate. I'm happy to be at the forefront of that, right? She says, though, that the root cause is, she goes, women, this is specific, this is a direct quote, women slash feminism. This is a manipulation tactic, right? Women are not feminism. Females are not feminism. Feminism is an ideology. It's a toxic ideology, and it's a hate movement, and it's a supremacist movement under the guise of some, like, harmless positive thing for women's empowerment. No, complete bullshit, and I've given entire speeches on that. But what did she do? Women slash feminism. She tries to make these two interchangeable so that if you attack feminism, or even if you disagree with it at all, right? They, we live in this in feminist soft matriarchy. These people can't even fathom. They're so arrogant. They're so wrapped up in their own bullshit. They can't even fathom that a doctor, a psychologist, or a therapist, or an attorney, we had an attorney speak, a female attorney, Melissa Isaac, at 22 Convention of the Women, that she doesn't like feminism at all. She thinks it's stupid and toxic. They can't even fathom that an everyday American, a man, a woman, a professional, an attorney, a psychologist, would genuinely disagree with feminism and think it's a bad, negative thing, at least at this point, if not for a long, long time. So what they're doing, though, is they're making it so if you attack feminism, you automatically attack women. And who would attack women? You must hate women if you, like, so this is the manipulation shit they do, right? They package deal it, right? You can't now, if you attack feminism, now you attack women instantaneously. No, that's bullshit. I remember an attendee here at a conference back in 2018. He went up to the mic and he said, I hate feminism, but I love women. 100%. Most guys are like that. Most men, especially here, you're very interested in women. You really want to bang them. 
right? You want to start a family, you want to get laid, whatever the combination of these things are, you're very positive about women. This hating women stuff, it's bullshit. It's slander, it's bullshit. They're trying to derail the movement. And this stuff is very tricky because people fall for it, right? They conflate women and feminism. No, feminism is a movement, it's an ideology. I call it the religion of modern women. The average woman in America today, the belief system that guides her life, it's not uh, some secular thing like Buddhism, right? It's not Christianity. What is it? It's feminism. What guides her life choices from you know, her teenage years all the way to the end of her life? Relationships, marriage, family formation, college, schooling. At every step, it's feminism. Feminism, 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 feminism. Even if they don't identify as a feminist, it's feminism. 95% of the fucking time. That even includes conservative women, right? They'll say, oh, I'm, an, they, I'm not, I don't like feminism, I'm an anti-feminist, except for like, you know, uh, second and first wave, right? They'll say they're basically like 80% feminist and they say they're not a feminist, it's bullshit. Anyway, this last part is a big point and it really pisses me off because it's very manipulative and people fall for it. It's a fallacy. So again, they call us male supremacists, right? That's a nasty fucking term. You don't want your face, <laughs> do you want your face on the front page of the New York Times? male supremacist Nazi or whatever fucking nonsense they make up, that's sick. Men are not in favor of that. And it's projection of, fe of female, of feminists, right? These nasty fucking women who hate men and they systematically get it into the court system and all this crap in our policies in our country. It's sick. They're saying by, because they attack, she attacks 21 Convention and tracks it in this document extensively. She's saying, we've had medical doctors speak at 21 Convention, attorneys, FBI agents, literally FBI agents, I guess the last decent human being to work at it, Joe Navarro. Awesome dude, he was, he was an FBI agent, special agent for like 25 years. You know, like we've had all kinds of awesome speakers there. She's, they're saying that these people are all uh, male supremacists. It's sick, right? Navy SEALs, therapists, psychologists, professors, exercise physiologists. These accusations are not just wrong and defamatory, they're fucking delusional. They're not even close to reality. Because these people, like the Kelly Fitzgeralds of the world and these nasty, pink hat fucking weirdos, they hate us for no good fucking reason. They don't want to talk, they don't want to debate, they don't want to ask questions, they're not curious. They want to shut everything down, they want to censor you and silence you and near to you and fuck up your whole country and your whole life. It's sick. These people are fucked in the head, man. No matter what you are, right? You can, be, you can work at fucking Best Buy or something, or you can be a medical doctor, an attorney, or literally an FBI agent, retired. Male supremacist, male supremacist, male supremacist. These people are fucking nuts. Now, we're getting back to the frauds. Did you forget about the frauds? I hope not. We ain't never gonna forget the frauds. Particularly when they want you to shut up and forget the frauds. Then you keep talking about them and you keep posting memes. So this is the fraud chicks. Especially white chicks, these are fraud chicks. Now the dude on the right is the fake CEO we went over earlier with the memes, right? The FBI thing there's a joke. That's just from the movie, it doesn't matter. The thing on the left does matter. This dude, Amru Fruddle from Fake and Fresh down in Miami, this podcast, right? That is huge scandalous here on YouTube. There's like a thousand videos that went after him. I, didn't, I was barely involved with this. I was watching it, like this is awesome. But these dudes got roasted. And what these people found is that Amru Fruddle, this dude in the Manosphere, was a Homeland Security special agent from 2013 to 2020. This is an affidavit from, a, he swore, he under penalty of perjury, under sworn oath, as a special agent, he affirmed that he's a special agent for Homeland Security investigations. So he, and then he, he confirmed on a video on top of that. This is a copy of the lawsuit. You can find it yourself. It's like in the Southern District of Florida, down in Miami or whatever. So you're supposed to believe, well, first of all, it's official that with this document, right? This is a 109 page thesis from an employee at Homeland Security published in December, 2020. You're supposed to believe this fraudulent piece of shit was, in his own words, a Homeland Security special agent from 2013 to 2020, and then he says he quit or got fired or something. Really? Right when all this shit's going down, they're investigating us, mapping it out? That's like the people who go on CNN, they're like an uh, ex-CIA analyst, right? Oh, for 20 years they worked for the CIA and now they retired a month ago. Now they work at CNN or MSNBC. Really, you're retired, you're not getting money anymore? Get the fuck out of here. These people are liars, they're frauds. Whether it's on CNN with that kind of government shit, or this piece of shit, this lying fraud. I don't believe that for a second. This guy was a professional, literal, federal snitch.
for over seven years. And then he joins the Manosphere and blows up. They were calling him the Harvey Weinstein of Miami. He was trying to use his podcast to bang chicks forcefully. And Matt, he was trying to, he basically saying, if you want to come on my podcast, you got to suck my dick. Can you imagine if I told these women over here, speaking at 22, well, Jennifer Molesky, you want to speak, you better get on your knees and blow daddy dream. Are you fucking kidding me? That's insane. That's what this fucking idiot does. These people are infiltrators and fucking weirdos and scammers. And I'm supposed to believe, in his own words, he worked for Homeland Security Investigations as a special agent, and then a year ago you fucking quit, and now you're in the manosphere? Golly fucking gee, I believe you. I wonder what you'd say if you were lying to me. Like he got busted lying and being a huge pussy earlier this year, just a few months ago. Look this up, this stuff. This is sick, man. This is fucked up. And people believe this. Like, people talk about being, I'm red pill aware. Man, are you even like common sense aware? You believe this federal agent, this federal fucking snitch, who's been a professional liar for seven years? It's crazy. It's delusional. Insane. Now, we're going to get into more of this here. Why this is all tying it together and why it's important. So this is our governor in Florida, Ron DeSantis, America's number one governor. This guy's a fucking savage. He's a Florida man. Uh, he's definitely like, he's 100% Florida man. He's like the hero of Florida. Love this guy. So this is uh, basically, you know, recently, not even that long ago, a few weeks ago, uh, the Biden administration, uh, Sleepy Joe, whatever, Beijing Biden, says he's going to sick. He had the attorney general have the F has the FBI now investigating concerned parents, right, for learning critical race theory and all this sort of fucking garbage, this Marxist garbage, right? They're basically trying to treat concerned parents in America as domestic terrorists, right? Just like with the Manosphere calling us now male supremacists, uh, beating, you know, beating women as part of the community. This is insane, right? Totally nuts. The same thing with parents. And he's the one governor, one of the few, that stood up immediately and said, no, we're not going to let these parents get bullied and intimidated and all this shit. So this is what they're doing, though. They're trying to demonize par concerned parents, right? Make them out to be domestic terrorists and all this crazy shit. And he's the guy who stood up against it immediately. Good for him. Fuck yeah. But the point is that they're making out everyday normal Americans to be domestic terrorists, including if you're like a 44-year-old Gen X concerned parent, domestic terrorist. Now, last I checked, domestic terrorists were like Timothy McVeigh in the 90s. You blow up a building and kill hundreds of people. That's a domestic terrorist. If you're going to a PTA meeting because your kid's learning fucking Marxist communist garbage, that's not a domestic terrorist. These people are liars and they're manipulators and they view you as the enemy. They view you as evil. They're fucking crazy. This is the mayor of Chicago, this Beetlejuice-looking bitch. <laughs> You've probably seen her in the news. A couple, this is October 18th, a couple days ago, right? A week ago or whatever. Chicago mayor says police union. Her own police force, right? Where she fucking, she's the mayor. She's the elected official of a major American city. Says that the police union is trying to induce an insurrection. More domestic terrorist shit. Could, because they, have, they don't like the, the vaccine mandates for their cops which is really common for local police officers, for sheriff's deputies around the United States. They don't want it. And they're organizing like any other body of employees can, right, and the right to, to say, no, we don't fucking want it. So you can be a concerned parent, domestic terrorist. You know, you don't like your kid learning communism, domestic terrorist. You can literally be a police officer, domestic terrorist. These people are fucking crazy. They're not just assholes, they're not just bullies, they're not just abusers, they're fucking nuts. And they have a vendetta, and they have an agenda, and whatever the fuck it is, and wherever the fuck it goes, it ain't good. And they're trying to do that to the manosphere. This stuff with these Homeland Security people and all this bullshit, mapping it out, male supremacists, beating women, incels, this is a fucking setup. They see the manosphere as a powerful community of men, and they see it as a threat to their, this cultural, weird fucking establishment. We're going to get into it in a minute, but I believe that the manosphere is the only real counterculture in America. You know, Paul Joseph Watson is a YouTuber I like. He's like 2 million subscribers. He's a good dude, I think. But he says, like, conservatism is the new counterculture. No, that's bullshit. 100% bullshit. There's a bunch of political conservatives that are like, you know, I call them conservahoes. These chicks? We'll get into Tommy Lauren in a minute. Tommy Lauren is supposed to be this brave, conservative pundit, the blonde, blonde bitch, right? No, she's a fucking feminist. She's pro-abortion. Says, oh, she, uh, she went on a rant. All men are trash. Really? You're the counterculture saying all men are trash? Smash the patriarchy. Really? You're, a fucking, you're the counterculture? It's bullshit. The manosphere is. It's not even like very political. 
But in general, culturally, the manosphere, this is what these, these Homeland Security people, what Kelly's looking at, the manosphere rejects all the woke garbage, right? Not just this tyrannical mandate shit, not just the trans crap, not just feminism, not just the woke garbage, not just communism, like all of it. Because masculine men don't like it. I said, uh, fundamentally, as, as, a, as an attitude of life, as a point of view on the world, as a world view, I've said previously that our founding fathers, 1776, was the ultimate collision of masculinity and philosophy. Those men were super, super masculine, and they had good ideas to back them, right? They don't like that, it's a threat. Masculine men are a threat. That's why they want you weak and fat and stupid and they want women running your ass. Like all these guys, you know, it's, it's, uh, it doesn't have to be this huge philosophical thing, right? Think about in America today, there's a couple hundred million people. How many fathers and husbands went to Best Buy, wanted to buy a TV and they pushed out the last minute? Gotta check with the wife, gotta check with the boss, man, I'll be back. This is how pussified our fucking culture has become. You can't even lead your family and buy a fucking TV without your wife running your ass. Happy wife, happy life. All this stupid little bullshit, this is how they get in your head, man. All these little stupid ideas, that's feminism in a nutshell, in your everyday life. Never mind all the, the more advanced shit you see on TV and in the news. So they want to make everybody out to be domestic terrorists. But in the, the manosphere is next. This is what they're doing. And I'm not going to stand for it. So everyone's an enemy of the state before we move off this. Glenn Greenwald, he's a gay liberal journalist. But I like this guy. He's the guy who uh, edited the Edward Snowden stuff back in like 2013, 2012, whatever it was. He's been sounding the alarm since God, the Biden, Beijing Biden got in, that they're basically, like with the parents and like with the police unions, they're turning the surveillance state, right, this federal fucking bureaucracy of assholes inwards in on America. Parents, cops, manosphere, whatever, all this stuff, right? It's a domestic war on terror. But, they're, the, but it's bullshit, right? It's all bullshit. It's all scam. He said, literally nothing that could be more dangerous. It's not fear-mongering or alarmism. It's very real. The real domestic terrorists are these fucking people, minus Joe Navarro. He's a nice guy, great author. You should read his books. FBI, Homeland Security. Why? Because they terrorize normal people. That's what they do like full fucking time now. Parents, cops. Are you a man who wants to be a masculine domestic terrorist? These people are fucked in the head, man. They're crazy or they're malicious or they're knowingly doing wrong. They're fucked. I call it, you know, I'm a fan of Ayn Rand, my favorite philosopher. And she has something that's very similar to what Jack Donovan talks about. Jack talks to you guys about the empire of nothing. What is nothing? Zero. Ayn Rand has said something very similar to that. She said that these kind of people, they worship the philosophy of zero. They worship the zero. And what is the ultimate zero? Death. It doesn't mean they sit there and they're like praying to death. It means they're obsessed with zeroing everything out, the empire of nothing. How much masculinity do these people want? Zero masculinity. How much femininity do they want? Feminine women? Zero, right? Want well, to masculinize them all, get them green hair, make them fucking weird, tattoos, nose rings, all this bullshit. How much family do they want? Nuclear family? Zero. War and family, war and masculinity, war and femininity, right? How much freedom do they want? Zero. Everything is fucking zero, 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 zero with these people. They worship zero. They're fucking weird and they're nuts. And a lot of them, they're never going to come around. They don't want to. They, they're antagonistic to free speech. They want to, not only do they not want to talk to you, they want to control what comes out of your fingertips on a computer screen or how you use your tongue in your mouth. That's how fucking sick these people are. They can't stand free speech. They can't stand the First Amendment. They want to control what you say, what you type, all that shit so they can control what you think and so they can control what you do. Above and beyond even that, People don't realize this, like you got, like think about, let's talk about free speech for a second. You got to this conference because you got information, speech, communicated to you about it. If that information was censored from you effectively, you physically wouldn't be in those seats. They would effectively have controlled what you do with your life if they had censored my company completely because you wouldn't even know about it. They would control you in ways you don't even know by censoring you. That's how evil anti-free speech stuff is. That's why it's the First Amendment, above and beyond even guns, which I'm a huge fan of. Guns are fucking awesome. Speech is even more important. Words are the most dangerous weapon in the world. That's why they have to control them. That's why they want to control your mouth and your fingertips and your fucking tongue. Those people are sick. They can't respect you as another human being and just leave you alone. I want to be left alone. You know, I was talking to Sean Smith the other day before he left. I said something that caught him by surprise. He like, was almost ready to write it down. I said that the only people who are going to leave you alone are people who want to be left alone. 
That's it. They share a common fundamental value with you. If they don't want to be left alone, they ain't going to leave you alone. Jack Donovan, again, wrote an awesome newsletter a few months ago, maybe like five, six months ago. And the newsletter was about they will never leave you alone. No matter where you move, Florida, Utah, Texas, all these awesome states, right? They still have a lot of freedom right now, right? In this kufid shitstorm of stupidity. They won't leave you alone. They're never going to stop. They're, it's annoying to them that you exist and you want to be free. It's aggravating to them because they're codependents and they want to like, latch out to you like a parasite. They can't stand it. The fact that you even want to be left alone, that you want to be self-responsible, that you want to be strong and independent and wealthy and all these things, that you want to be good with the opposite sex, this is annoying to them. They don't want to see you do well. They don't want to leave you alone. They don't want you to mascul you know, have masculine self-improvement. They don't want you to build a business. They don't want you to build a family. It is aggravating to them even at the conceptual level because they can't do it themselves because they're fucking losers by choice. Not because they're usually, not unless they're retar born retarded or something, you know, birth defect. They choose to be losers over a lifetime because they're fucking idiots. It's their own fault. You need to realize that. A lot of these people are evil because they have evil ideas and they knowingly hold them. They're responsible for it. People in this country become scared of pronouncing moral judgment on other people. I'm not. I judge everyone all the time about everything. I'm a completely 100% judgmental asshole. And if you have evil ideas that you know are evil and you want to fucking control other people without their consent and against their free will, you're fucked in the head. You're evil. I'm not afraid to say it. I'm not a Christian. I'm not religious. None of that stuff. I'm saying that on objective, universal grounds. I'm a human being. You're a human being. I want to be respected as an individual. I'm going to respect you the same way. And if you fuck that up, you and I are not friends. Not live, you know, we're not going to like get along. What is it? Uh, agree to disagree. No, go fuck yourself. You're going to leave me alone. I'm going to make you leave me alone. That's how this relationship works. Because these people are abusive. There's another book I wanted to show you guys. Psychologist Alice Miller. I found her back in 2020. It's a book called For Your Own Good. All right? And think about all this Kufit stuff, right? The mandates, so, you know, all this the vaccine crap, all this fucking stupid shit, right? Whether you do it or not is up to you. But the minute you want to mandate it and you want to force it, and you want to put stuff in my body without my consent and against my will, you and I have a big problem. These words, though, title of the book, awesome book, for your own good. That's how they rationalize all that shit, right? Oh, it's for your own good, man. It's for your own good. I don't give a fuck what you think. <laughs> and on top of that, whenever anyone says it's for your own good, this is an abusive relationship. These are the words of an abuser every time, whether it's a toxic, nasty woman, some you know, crazy BPD, cluster B, cluster fuck chick, hot, but probably crazy as shit, right? Or a government, or anything in between. Or a friendship, right, or a family member, it's for your own good. No, abuse. This is abusive in every fucking time. Fuck politics, fuck all this political philosophy, no. The minute it's about, they're breaking all these boundaries, man. It's about boundary breaking. They're gonna break your own boundaries for your own good. That's a lie every fucking time. These people are abusers. They're fucked in the head, man. So fuck around and find out. These people, so one of the things I learned from Trump is offense. Offense, offense, offense. Don't wait and defend, right? The best uh, defense is a good offense. I'm taking a lot of offense, so fuck around and find out, Kelly. The first thing I'm doing after this conference and wrap up is I'm contacting the governor's office and the Florida Attorney General about the manager being falsely demonized and defamed by these people. The FBI, Homeland Security, all this fucking garbage. I'm contacting my senators, Rick Scott and Marco Rubio. I'm not, I don't really like Marco that much, but I like Rick Scott, he's all right. Senator Rand Paul, I'm filing FOIA requests and all these fucking pieces of shit. I'm Ruth Fuddle, Kelly Fitzgerald, her professors, all of them. FOIA requests are Freedom of Information Acts uh, requests. They're usually free or really cheap. If those don't work and they deny them, I'm going to appeal them. And if they deny the appeal, I'm going to sue them, 100%. I already filed a lawsuit this year. I'm going to file fucking more if I have to, whatever it fucking takes. Fuck with me and I'll fuck with you. I'm going to contact state rep Anthony Sabatini, dude's based in Lake, uh, Lake County, savage motherfucker. He's running for Congress. I'm going to contact Project Veritas, James O'Keefe. I got to meet a couple times this year. Like uh, Watchdog Group, they expose government bullshit. Same thing with Judicial Watch, another nonprofit, government watchdog. They expose these weirdos and these manipulators and these fucking liars. I'm going to push every fucking button to make your life fucking hell because you want to fuck with me and my fucking community that I've been a part of my whole fucking life and my fucking company and my fucking fucking platform and my fucking state and my fucking country. Fuck you.
I want to take a little second here and kind of illustrate what the Manosphere does and how it's affecting men in the United States in a positive way and around the Western world, right? Canada, Australia, Britain. A lot of guys wanted to come here from those countries, you know, the West, and they couldn't because of travel bullshit, all this stupid stuff. Of all the airlines, Delta has been the most based. Who would have thought? You know, I didn't see that coming. I'll take it. Uh, so Delta, your CEO, airlines, you know, recently, October 14th, he ditches the divisive COVID vaccine mandate for his employees, talks about the vaccination rates, who fucking cares? The point is that he calls it divisive. And this is, I wanted to point this out because it's really common. You've seen this divisive term like all over the place, right? It's divisive, it's divisive. Well, why is it divisive? No one's really talking about that. The assumption is that it's either, they basically say it's either this mysterious, nebulous, slippery, divisive thing that doesn't really have an answer. That's dumb. That's just like the generic, like they're fucking too lazy to think about it, or they don't want to tell you and they're manipulators, right? So it's divisive for reasons that we're not going to talk about. Bullshit. Or they go the other direction. They say it's divisive because of these crazy Trump supporters or QAnon people or what else is bullshit, right? They just pick like little you know, groups of people and then they like blame it all on that. Both of those are bullshit. The reason these mandates, particularly the vaccine mandate is, is uh, divisive is because it left the realm of politics. It got personal. I have personal boundaries, like my personal space around me. And if you violate that, you might get in a fight with me. Vice versa too, man. If I get up in your space, you're gonna feel threatened. This is a very physical, primal thing, right? But the ultimate, the ultimate boundary, the ultimate physical bar boundary and physical barrier is your skin. These people want to penetrate your body and your skin, an organ, right? You're fucking a, the biggest organ you have against your will and without your consent. Whether you take this stuff or not on your own, hey, it's up to you, man. Maybe it's going to help you. Maybe it'll fuck you up 20 years from now. I don't know. I don't really care. It's your life. You know, good luck, man. Make your own decisions. Be responsible. I'm not responsible for you. You're responsible for you and you're not responsible for me. That's how this relationship works. But this stuff is divisive for they don't want to mention it, right? They want to get in your skin and put shit in your body against your will and without your consent. They want doctors to practice medicine on you, whether you're an employee, you know, 100 million people, if you have 100 employees, all this bullshit, right? And you're a cop, you're a pilot, whatever, right? They want to violate your ultimate, final, personal boundary and personal barrier. That's well beyond politics. That totally left the realm of like Congress and Senate. Fuck all this bullshit. You're not getting in my body. I'm going to fight and die for that issue. That's my, that's my line in the sand. I'm not taking that shit. I don't want it. I'm never getting it. I'm going to fight and die over it, and I'm not giving you my guns. I'm a human being, and you're going to leave me alone. I'm going to make you leave me alone. That's how this works. This is my skin, and you're not getting in it, period. End of story. End of discussion. The reason for this is another quote from Ayn Rand. She is famous of saying that reason is for the reasonable. These people are unreasonable. Right? They want to get in your skin for your own good, against your will and without your consent. We're done. This relationship's immediately over. We're done. Like, you have left the realm of reason and debate, and on top of the censorship, and they hate you speaking out and speaking up and wanting to have these issues, you know, talk about them and be curious and debate. No. We're done. Reason only works on the reasonable. There's a thousand other quotes like this, right? You know, fools, you can't reason with them, all this stuff. It's true. Right? If they don't want to reason, you talking to them about it, let's have a debate about the issues. They're fucking, either they're nuts or they just don't give a fuck. They have valued, they have risen, raised something in value over reason, over ideas, over debate, over free speech, over respect for your individuality and your rights and your body and your skin. They're out of, they left the room. They walked out the fucking room of reason and it's done. Conversation's over. That's why this stuff is so divisive, right? They want to get in your body and that's it. And it's abusive, man. These people are abusers. Forget the left, right, Democrat, Republican, all this fucking crap. People that want to control what you do and get in your body are abusers. Whether it's a girlfriend, a wife, flipping that if you're a girl and you know, you're know with, uh, with a dude, or it's with the government and people that want to do this stuff. It's sick. It's a masculine attitude. You will leave me alone or I will make you leave me alone. Men in this country are getting their balls back and the manosphere is responsible for that. That's one of the main reasons they don't like it, right? The guy who goes to Best Buy, oh, I gotta check with the boss, man, gotta check with my sweetie, gotta check with the leader of my family, but I'm making up these, you know, contrived fucking names for it. That's fucked. Men like that don't stand up for themselves. The manosphere is teaching men to not get abused, to, to navigate divorce court, which is an abusive system in itself, to stand up for themselves, to be men, to act like men, like our founding fathers and our forefathers before us did. They didn't get bullied around. What do you think your grand, my grandfather was in World War II, right? 
You think he'd come back and get bullied around? They're going to stick sh shots in him and shit outside of the military and those contracts and shit? No. They're not going to tolerate that shit. Why? Because they were men who acted like men. They were masculine. Men being masculine is a threat because they don't do what they're told. They're disobedient. Get the fuck away from me. Go fuck yourself. You're a fraud. Fuck you, right? All the stuff they were doing. That's what men do. They want you to act like a little beta bitch so that they can control you. Beyond that, who knows? People say communism and all this stuff. I think actually Michael Foster introduced me a book. A lot of it ends up being neo-feudalism. And Marxism and communism are like a stepping stone to even worse shit. But that's like a very complex argument and it is what it is. We won't get in the weeds on that. But the manosphere is making men masculine, psychologically, physically, right? Getting fit, getting strong, getting wealthy, wanting to be left alone, learning how to defend your boundaries. They don't like this, right? They want you to be weak and passive and do what you're fucking told. Nope. Again, with the conservatives, right? The manosphere is the real counterculture. This is a super thought. Tommy Lauren, I call her. <laughs> I love the memes. Conservatism, political conservatism. I've been to a lot of conferences this year. I went to two CPACs. That's like the biggest conservative conference. I went to a Turning Point USA event, like a young uh, college, you know, kind of conservative event. And I went even to a libertarian event, which they kicked me out of, by the way. They said my brand didn't fit with their brand because I don't like feminism. I think it's fucking stupid, right? They can't handle that. I've been in these events and I, I learned some things too. I'm glad I went. I'm going to go back next year. For example, I thought that Zoomers are more based than Boomers, and I found the opposite to be true. Older Boomers that are conservative and stuff, they'll at least talk to you about masculinity and femininity and family issues, right? The Zoomer people are much more abrasive to it. They don't like it. They don't want to talk about it. And I think the reason, and I don't know exactly why Boomers are, I think, more based than Zoomers, the opposite of what the current meme is. But I think it's because Boomers grew up in an age of America, and wherever they're from, but usually in America, these events, they grew up without the internet. Right? They grew up with that social media, hyper-woke stuff, hyper-radical feminism. Like, we don't even have radical feminism anymore. We have hyper-radical feminism. This shit's like completely off the chain. Me Too is a good example of that, and on and on and on down the fucking line. Anyway, you know, this is like the conservative, a lot of conservatives though, right? Especially all the women. They're all fucking the feminists, right? Oh, I'm a conservative, I'm a I'm, you know, Christian, Christian conservative. Yeah, right, you're a liberal fucking feminist in disguise. You're a chameleon. Most of them, not all of them, but like, Probably 80% of them, they're fucking feminists. But at least the men and some of the women will talk to us. I went to these events and you know, older women and men, right, together, or single, whatever, they took selfies of me with my hats and shit, toxic masculinity, you know, they loved them. They wanted to buy them from me and stuff. You know, make women virgins again, make women great. At least they'll talk to you. Zoomers, not so much. But again, though, this is an example of why the manosphere is the real counterculture. The conservative stuff is not, that's BS, man. In summary, state of the manosphere, there's a lot of frauds, there's literally feds. The manosphere has real power, like feminism changed the course of American history. Feminism, you know, like I said, is like the religion of modern women. It's by far the most dominant ideology in the United States and in the West. It controls everything. The military is all fucking feminist, all the governments are feminist, all the branches of the federal government are feminist, all the state governments are feminist, your county governments are basically feminist, the schools are feminist, the churches are feminist. It's all fucking feminist all the fucking time, right? We swim. We're like fish swimming in feminism. But the manosphere like feminism has real power to change the course of history by making men masculine and strong and encouraging women to be feminine like we're doing at the 20 Duke Convention where we're making women great again. The manosphere is real counterculture. Enemies are afraid. That's why they're projecting all this crap, right? You literally have female supremacists, right? The future is female. All this fucking stupid garbage, right? They project male supremacists. No, but you're a female supremacist and you don't want to admit it and you're an asshole on top of that and an abusive one. So they're afraid though. That's why they make these documents. Or they, that's why they slander you. That's why they defame you. It'd be one thing if they insult us. I could take that, right? I, I'm going to dish it out back. That's fine. But when you lie and manipulate and you do all the sketchy shit, no. They do it because they're afraid and they're scared. And they should be in peaceful ways. There's a positive future for the manosphere. There's more fraud and feds and all this bullshit because the manosphere is bigger than it's ever been. There's more people involved than it's ever been. There's, more, there's millions and millions of dollars moving around every year in it. It's a real movement. It's a big thing. It's way bigger than you realize. Talk to guys like Will Spencer and stuff about it. It's huge. Millions and millions and millions of men are involved with it in different ways, right? Different organizations, different leaders, different content creators, different authors, all that stuff. But it has a positive future. 
that's why this stuff is coming to a boiling point, right? There's been fraud since I got in, in the Manosphere in 2005. There's been fraud since day one. These fat losers literally in their mom's basement writing e-books about how to get laid. They don't get laid at all, or they fuck old fat women, all this gross stuff, right? There's always been frauds, and every industry will have frauds. There's more now than there's ever been, because it's bigger and there's more money involved. They're attracted to it, right? Like little sharks or parasites or something. They want it. And now that looks bad on paper, it's not. It means it's growing and it's getting healthy. These issues are coming out into the open. That's a good thing. That's what the memes are for, right? They're funny and I laugh and we lo I like you being an asshole and pissing these people off, but they have a real positive, useful utility to them. They, it's like a picture says a thousand words, right? Memes say 10,000. And these things are highlighting these issues and bringing them to the forefront. So that's it. That's the state of the Manosphere 2021. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Boom. Good morning, Britain. We are finding out how men can make women great again because uh, in Orlando, Florida, is a man charging almost a thousand dollars. Anthony Dream Johnson, who says he wants to abolish feminism and make women great again. Yeah, Orlando, Florida, that's going to be the scene of the crime. 21 studios, okay? They are pretty much the Avengers of the Manosphere. So this convention is put on by a company called 21 Studios, and they have this whole convention every year called the 21 Convention, where it's just teaching men how to be better. Women are queuing up to pay nearly $1,000 to have a man like Anthony tell them how to be women. It's mansplaining palooza. Anthony Dream Johnson. That's really his name. But he's the founder of the convention. Like yourself and like Anthony Johnson, the president. The first president of the Manosphere. You're protecting the sphere in a way that not enough people give you credit for. Thanks, man. And I really mean that, because if you didn't protect the sphere at all, it would just be a complete shit show. That's why you're the president, right? <laughs> you gotta be presidential. You gotta be presidential. Uh, and that guy's name was Anthony the Dream Johnson, the president of the f***ing Manosphere. There's only one guy in the Manosphere. Yeah, you're a peach, uh, Mr. President. You're f***ing done, dude. That's all there is to it. Uh, all in favor, say aye. Excuse me, I'm mansplaining here.